So Julie, you uh, started uh, as an actress in a lot of uh, with a lot of very heavy and influential filmmaker. You know, I'm thinking about like Godard, Carax, Kielowski, Tavernier, uh, and then later on in your life, you started. Uh, you work also with Richard Linklater, uh, directing films, uh, and your films are mostly comedies, except for one. Mm -hmm. So you directed. Uh, I think the films that are most known here would be Two Days in Paris and Two Days in New York. Uh, then you did The Countess and Skylab, which is also pretty funny. And your new film is Lolo. So could you talk a little bit about maybe your love for comedy and why you wanted to start as a director uh, directing comedy? Well, you know, I'm actually a very dark person. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it's actually true. <laughs> no, I have two sides. I'm very dark and also quite funny. I mean, I get very dark and then I make fun of myself for being dark. So, you know, I, I kind of, uh, it, it turns out that um, I, I end up doing mostly comedies because also I get them finance easier. Uh, it's, it's easier to, <laughs> to get a, f a comedy made uh, than it is to get a drama made. Somehow drama is a little more, you know, scary for people. I mean, you know. Comedies, uh, in a way, uh, also, you know, comedies, uh, people make usually money with it, and, you know, dramas, not always, so it's, it's, uh, so, 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 so that's the way it is, and I enjoy making comedies, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a lot of fun, I, I enjoy making people laugh, I enjoy being crazy, naughty, being like, it's like being a child again, I mean, I love it, you know, um, and, uh, and it's not necessarily easy to make comedies, it's, there's a challenge there, which is like being funny, because you know, a comedy that's not funny, <laughs> it's really nothing. You know, a drama that's not really sad or too dramatic can still pass for a movie, but a comedy that's not funny, it's just a complete disaster. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, the challenge, is to be funny. You know. So you didn't just make comedy t for money, right? You attracted to it too. <laughs> yeah, I don't only do things for money. <laughs> I actually <laughs> enjoy making movies. Um, actually, if I was only in for the money, I would be making another kind of comedies, and I would be making other things, you know. So, so I mean, I haven't figured it out actually yet completely how to really make money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this film did really well. Lolo, not this film, whatever. There's no film there, but uh, Lolo is, did really well in France, you know. And so, uh, you know. I made a little money, but I mean, that wasn't the, the, uh, the goal, you know, that was, uh, I love entertaining, I love having fun. You know, I'm actually thinking about starting stand-up, because I, I like comedy so much that, you know, but it would be so bad that I think I would, uh, I would get, um, you know, killed or something. But um, it would be really bad, I think. I would be terrible. Uh, but so I'm not doing it yet. I'm, um, we, we can rehearse. <laughs> no, no, no. It's better we don't. <laughs> no, no, I'm completely... No, no, it would be disastrous. But no, no. But I love uh, comedy for, you know, for other reasons than making money. I mean, two days <laughs> in Paris ended up making money, but originally, you know, like I made... It, 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 people made money with it, but I actually never saw a dime. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, they made a lot of money okay, worldwide. Someone but else got rich so, from Yeah, it. exactly. Okay. I'm, I, I, I like making other people rich, <laughs> basically. Well, it's looking good for me. <laughs> the guy actually <laughs> saved his company in France with, with that film, you know. You mean the producer? Or yeah. The, okay. He saved his company. I was happy he saved his company. I love, he has a beautiful boat, but now they went bankrupt. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. They made too many films you after that. You need to that, make um, <laughs> two days somewhere else and save him. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. that's really my goal, is to save him. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about um, comedies and writing, because you write your film or you co-write your films, can you talk a little bit about the process for the writing? So, you write, so your jokes are a lot of uh, comedic timing, but it's also very verbal, which translates actually very, very well in English. And it's, it's hard to have comedy travel. A lot of them don't work that well. But yours are specifically, um, I think, work really well with an American audience as well as a French audience. So can you talk about your writing process? Yeah, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I saw that in Toronto because we had half the room French, half the room English, and they were laughing at the same time. There was one or two things that got lost in translation, some kind of subtlety of uh, dirty words in French that are so dirty in French, and they're just kind of just 
just dirty in English and in French they were really really dirty so you know they were funnier in French because so much dirtier but you know sometimes French language can go very far in the in the flowery uh, uh, argo, um, slang that you know sometimes I, there's subtleties you know it's it's not exactly translatable sometimes you know but um, outside of that most most people laugh at the same time which is a good sign you know for me but um, yeah, I mean, I try to think humor, when I think of humor, I, I think of a humor that can appeal to, you know, in a way, everyone. Not because I want to make money, but because, uh, <laughs> because no, because I, I really, first of all, because I have friends from all over the world. And when I meet my friends, I'm not bragging, it's just the way my life started evolving and traveling and everything. And, and basically, I like to, when I'm with my friends, I like to make everyone laugh, not just, you know, the French or the Americans or the Japanese or the, you know, Russian. I like to, I like to have everyone enjoy the conversation, you know. Uh, and really, I love to, you know, when, you know, when Two Days in Paris came out, um, this one hasn't come out in most places, so, but you know, people from Brazil would come up to me and say, oh, this reminds me of my family, people from Russia, people from Asia, and I was like, oh, that's great, like, I reached something, you know, I was, I was happy about that, like, it made people laugh from different countries, you know, so different so cultures. So you get to watch a film like in other countries when you travel with it, yeah. and when you sit with the audience, or you just see the reaction at some point. Yeah, I sit a little bit mm -hmm. sometimes with the audience. Mm -hmm. I don't like to watch my films once they're mm -hmm. done; they're done. Like I try to think of the next one, mm -hmm. but um, don't like to dwell on the past or even too much on the present. I like to already think of the future always. Mm -hmm. But um, but I tr I try to watch just to have a sense. I mean, festivals are good for that because you have a mix of everything. Uh, every kind of people, so it 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 allows you to have a an, kind of a, an idea of like you know people liking the film and from different places and do you rehearse the jokes or hating the or film or, or hating the film <laughs> altogether from different places you know depending <laughs> so do you rehearse the jokes at all uh, like with outside of writing to see if it works or it translates do, well do I rehearse on people the jokes no 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 I don't no <laughs> no. But sometimes I use jokes I make at dinners later in films and stuff. It ha it's happened to me, but... So, so I do rehearse them sometimes, yeah, that's true. So do you use a lot of inspiration from your personal life for, like, like two days uh, film or maybe... You know, two days was very personal films because I made it with my family, with my friends. I had no choice. I had no money to make the film. So it's like I hired my parents, my friends. Everyone I knew was in the film. My cat. I mean, literally, like, my cat. Um, he's, he's gone, but he was a wonderful actor, <laughs> and, um, and I just, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so that's a very personal film, and it's true that it's inspired, it's not actually autobiographical, because I've never had an American boyfriend, I've had American boyfriends, but they never came to Paris to meet my parents, so I've never had this situation, but I, I imagine what it would be like, you know, if a, a more kind of nervous, neurotic, uptight American boyfriend would meet my parents who are those crazy, you know, completely like um, mad French people, you know, um, would meet, uh, you know, how, how it would clash, you know, I always love, I always love imagining embarrassing situation, like I'm constantly like looking, I'm, I'm walking down the street and I'm like, what if I did this and what if this person did that or, you know, like I always love this idea, it, it's kind of a giddy kind of crazy, you know, and sometimes I go the other way. I'm like, what if, you know, that truck run over me and I'm, you know, decapitated, then it's the end of it, you know, <laughs> like what, you know, I go the dark, I do the, I go the f very funny or the very dark, you know, it's like constantly like boom, 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 you know, it's, a, it's, it's, uh, it makes life, uh, exciting. <laughs> So you, you never met my um, husband because he's exactly like two days in Paris. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so I was just, you sure you never met him? <laughs> no, no, I've never met him. I didn't have uh, any, mm -hmm. I, no, I promise. The rabbits. Yeah, like no, I've we never. We visited all the pharmacy in every city we've been there. Oh, really? He's, yeah, uh, he's so like I neurotic like that. Yeah, exactly. So wow. Is it all men? Because seriously, it I don't think I've ever met a man that wasn't like that. I don't it's know. I, I must men. be attracting them. Yeah. I'm constantly with hypochondriacs. 
Like they stick to me. I, I don't know. Like I meet a guy, I meet men and like, no, I don't have that many men. I'm married. But, uh, <laughs> but in my past, in my youth, you know, I, I, they, they, they would always like, at first, like they seem like big, strong guy. I'm like, oh, he's not a hypochondriac. And then like t three months later, it suddenly creeps in and like, oh no, he, he is one, but he's been hiding it like <laughs> under like a coat of Hair, luscious hair, you know, but like it's it's actually a neurotic hypochondriac that looks like a truck driver, but you know, who knows why? But anyway, yeah, it's when you am I <laughs> so when you cook your first rabbit, it comes out. <laughs> yes. um, also, like so, you mentioned that you worked with your family, um, like your father, also in all your film. So, can you talk about a little bit more about working with you know, collaborating with family? Maybe you know the this. Film? This, 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 there was two parts of my family, my mother who passed away and my dad. And um, my mom was very easy to direct and very um, sweet and, and easy to deal with. And my dad is never easy to direct. <laughs> and I can't say he's the sweetest person. I mean, he's very funny, but he's very unpredictable. And actually on the second film, my mom had, had, had passed away already but he was on the second film and I know Chris Rock was c kind of scared of him <laughs> uh, because he was really scared that he would do something like unpredictable he's like make sure your dad like doesn't like ki French kiss me or something like he didn't know what my dad would do next in some scenes and he was always terrified and and Chris is a very very cr wonderful guy and very he's always very planned I mean he's a stand-up so he writes everything he, he thinks a lot he's a very very you know, um, he does a lot of thinking. I mean, he's a really, really smart guy and stuff. And my dad is this like impulsive, completely n not controllable, like an animal. I always say directing my dad is like directing King Kong. <laughs> I mean, like, you don't know what's going on. So, you know, there's family and family, you know what I mean? So my mom was very easy to direct and my dad was always um, the, the wild uh, creature. He still is. I mean, he's always like that. He's great. It's 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 kind of fantastic to be like that. And he doesn't care about famous people. He doesn't care about anything. You know, he he, he, did, he doesn't have any anything. He's like out of this world. Like he's like straight from the '60s, where everything was like you know, money doesn't matter. All that you know, fame doesn't matter. All that stuff. You know. But he's proud of you, right? Yeah, he's proud of me. But he doesn't care about like social status. Okay. He just cares about my happiness. He doesn't care about anything else really okay. it's kind of great pure people it's like so fucking rare <laughs> nowadays i mean it's like you know yes mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit maybe about your influences in uh, as a director um did you like a lot of america you've been compared to like woody allen you know like the french woody allen That's julie great. delpy uh, i hope I, I wish i could make a movie a year yeah. <laughs> you know, I wish. But you don't care about me. No, but I have enough movies to make a movie a year. Just I can't get the money together in time. I mean, I haven't found the the way yet. But I will, I will, um, because I'd love to be able to do that. No, but he's a great talent, and it's a great honor to be even vaguely compared to him is amazing. But like, um, you know, I do love Woody Allen because I love the language. I love the neurosis. I also like psychosis. So actually, I like Woody Allen, but I also like. Comedies by Scorsese. Mm -hmm. are some of my favorite comedy are actually Scorsese comedies, like King of Comedy, okay. which is my favorite film probably, or you know other films like about crazy people, like um, Doctor Strange Love is my, one of my favorite comedy because it's about psychotic, crazy, dangerous people. I sometimes like crazy, dangerous people make me laugh more than just neurotic people, but I like to combine the two. Uh, in Lolo, it's kind of like a psychopath, I mean, a sociopath with a neurotic mom. It's a good combination because really, like, you know, you know, narcissist, I mean, s s s psycho sociopath with, uh, with neurotic people. But, I mean, actually, sociopath, like, they, they usually cling on neurotic people because they, they're easy target. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you still watch a lot of, like, movies, like comedies or American comedies? Or I watch as much as I can. I watch, I watch um, you know, I watch sometimes, uh, I, I like some sitcom. You know, it depends mm -hmm. which one. Like, some I like, some I don't like. So it depends. I like old stuff from the 90s also, like the <laughs> Seinfeld <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Old stuff from the 90s. No, but you know, like sometimes there was a way, comedy was a bit more simple, like it was, but very funny, you know? Um, 
And uh, sometimes we became more sophisticated in some ways, but in some ways not really as funny. I, I don't know, there's something about like, there's a, a certain era of sitcom that was very funny in the 90s, I think. But um, I, um, I like uh, lots of different stuff. You know, it depends, you know, I go from watching new stuff to old stuff. Um, I, uh, I watch films also, obviously, like comedies, dramas. I get all the Oscar stuff, so I watch all of that. So you, you watch the French and the American? Like I try to like watch films. also a lot of French films mm -hmm. through the César. It's I get the box. You get a lot of boxes. The, the, I, yeah. I get yeah. a lot of movies. It's <laughs> great. It's great to be part of the, you know, those academy thing because you get, you get to to get all the movies mm -hmm. at home, which is good because I have a kid, so I can't go out that much. So. No, but it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's really sad. It's true. Mm -hmm. But it's true. You don't go out as much. I can't wait to be able to bring him to see, you know, The Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> but he's seven, so not yet. <coughs> I told him about the scene of the bear. We, we actually make, like, live action. I take a, the bear, and I, like, make the live action of the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I have videos you wouldn't believe. Like, it's better than the scene in the film. <laughs> You think that scene was terrifying. My version of it was my seven-year-old is something else. You, no, you no, but it's really funny. He's the bear. I'm the bear. <laughs> he's, he's Leo? And he's Leo. His name is Leo anyway, so yeah, so I'm the bear. Yeah. It's really funny. But no, I, don't, I can't show him those films yet, so whenever he grows up, you know, we'll go together, see lots of films. I can't wait to show him everything from Godard to, you know, uh, something else. The alien, you know, when he's like 15, we'll go see Alien, hopefully, in the cinema, you know. Or like something scary, you know, mm -hmm. because I know he's going to like scary stuff. He likes it already. So uh, you mean in the cinema, not at home? In a real yeah, cinema? Yeah, I'd love to bring okay. him in cinemas to see certain films, you know, okay. so. Well, you know, we, we, I hope cinema will exist for a very because long time. Because it's funny, for example, I waited until I could see it on the, on the big screen. I waited to see The Godfather on, until it was projected in a yeah. revival house, like in the big screen. So it really makes a difference, I think, to, um, to be able to see certain film. And you know, I had seen 2001 on the small screen, and then finally a friend of mine had for his birthday a screening of 2001, mm -hmm. and it was such a great experience to see it on the big screen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm still a fan of big screen stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. No, we, we are too, but I'm just yeah. worried about the future. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, I have, a, I have a pl to be in a dark room, with a lot of people watching a movie, there's nothing like it, you know? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, there's one last thing I wanted to talk to you about, and then we can open it up to the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk specifically about your relationship uh, with Richard uh, Linklater and working on the trilogy? You were acting only in the first one, but then you wrote also uh, the second and the third one. You know, you know we, Ethan and I wrote the mm -hmm. first one mm -hmm. as well. Okay. We were not credited because we were hired as actors and then he okay. made us rewrite the entire film, but mm -hmm. Richard says it himself. We really okay. went into a full rewrite. <laughs> it's I see it's I'm not the only one that doesn't know how to use her smartphone. No, it's... <laughs> It's Richard calling you to s to explain that yes, you did write the film. Huh? It's Richard calling to say to you say did yeah that he did. Yeah. No, no, but Richard is very open about the fact that we ended up rewriting everything, but we were not hired as writers, so you know there's rules and stuff that protects writers against actors that rewrite the entire film. <laughs> so you didn't get protect paid the for writers, it. you know, but the actors that ended up writing the film. Don't protect them. No, but like it was, so the second film we were pretty clear with Ethan. We're like, okay, this time, yeah. <laughs> this time, why don't we, since we wrote the first, you know, all together, you know, why don't we this time from the start make it clear that we're credited and we're writing this film together. So that's a, but you know, it's, it's a great process. We work together and, you know, I work with two men in the room. So it's kind of a process where they really listen to me because they want the woman's voice to be very, as balanced as possible and since I'm the only woman in the room mm -hmm. you know I get to talk for two of them you know kind of like they're being smart about that like because I, I think they really want the film to 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 be as much of a woman's voice as it is a man's voice you know and so they basically listen to me and I'm like 
schlock. No, uh, <laughs> I don't bust them around, but I do. No, 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 it's not like that. We don't have that kind of relationship. We have a lot of fun. We, you know, we, we play a lot. We, we laugh a lot. And then we find the right thing for the character and the next step, you know. Is it why you wanted to then direct? Um, because you started working on this side of the camera, mm. maybe? Listen, no, I, I, I wrote my first screenplay. I was 16. Oh. So I wanted to direct. Actually, Richard hired me on Before Sunrise and I hired Ethan because he knew we both wrote. <clears throat> so he wanted writers as much as actors. So I think the reason why he hired the two of us, other than the fact that we had connection on screen, you know, some kind of chemistry, <clears throat> he really wanted. Um, people that we're going to bring more than just, uh, not that it's just, but bring more than the, ac than the acting at, the, at that point. And so uh, I was writing since I was 16. I, I wrote my first screenplay, I was 16. I had written uh, another screenplay by the age of 20, and then obviously no one was going to finance a film by a 20-year-old woman actress. And so then I started, I kept on writing. The only thing that really helped me on Before Sunrise I didn't get credited, but I saw the review of the film and a lot of people liked specifically bits I had written. Mm -hmm. So it gave me confidence. You know, a lot of con confidence has a lot to do with what people do in life, I think. You know, more than talent, in a way I think confidence is, is, is almost, I mean, is so much of it, you know? And I think when you start having confidence in a little more confidence, I'm not saying I'm super confident, but a little more confidence, it allows you to start doing more, you know. If you tell someone you can never learn the piano past 30, they will not learn the piano past 30. It's proven, it's like scientifically. If you tell someone you can learn the piano as well as a 15-year-old, your mind is as well, or, or you, even if someone of 60, you can say to them, you can learn the piano as well as a 20-year-old. You say, it's been proven scientifically, they'll learn the piano as well as a 20-year-old. It's all, the mind is all about like confidence and being told you can do something or you can't do something. It's very important. That says a lot about education, you know, also. How people are, you know, but like being more confident as a writer made me start again. Because before that, I had worked with a writer. It was really funny. I gave him a bit of my script. It was Sam Shepard. And I gave him my script. <laughs> and he said, honey, you're so pretty. Please don't write. <laughs> And I admire him. I mean, listen, he's a great writer, but I was like, not a great, nice thing to do to a young writer, you know? <laughs> Especially a woman. It's like, puts you down, makes you feel like, oh, it's a, okay, then I'm a woman. I'm just, you know, doomed to be a pretty thing, and, you know, that's it. Actually so Richard like, was not yeah. like that, obviously, thank God. I don't know, I think, like, you're so pretty makes it even worse. Huh? <laughs> it makes it even worse when, like, you're so pretty. Like, you're so no, pretty, why do you, you want to write? Why, why bother? <laughs> But I think it's very funny. I mean, I, I don't hold him against him. I have nothing against him. You know, it's, it's a joke. I mean, I think it's very funny, you know. Well, I, I feel a lot more confident about myself now. <laughs> you, feel, you should. <laughs> uh, we're going to take some questions from the audience. I think we have some microphone. Uh, if not, I will repeat the question. Is there microphones? No. Okay. So, uh, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Godard uh, is, is quite, uh, he's, he's got a great sense of humor and he's very, he's extremely smart. He's like a genius. He's like a, you know, when you work with him, you realize he's basically the closest thing there is to a scientist as a filmmaker. Like, he's like the, ma the mind of a genius in a filmmaker's, you know, like creative process but basically it's like working with a uh, like like a scientific genius but he's a director you know so it's a very interesting combination he's quite funny he's very dark he has a dark sense of humor he can be extremely mean in a very intelligent way mean as hell to some people especially to people that take themselves too seriously or have an inflated ego he doesn't like that so he breaks them to pieces which is really kind of crazy when you when you witness that like you will destroy someone completely and uh <laughs> but to people that are insecure and simple he's actually very caring very loving very supportive of people that are fragile 
So he's actually a good person because that you're supposed to be like that. I mean, you're supposed to be supportive of fragile people and you know, people need to be reminded that they're only human and some people think themselves are more than that. So in this business, which is like, we're only making movies after all, you know, like, come on. So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I love him for that. He's very real in a, in a sense and completely crazy at the same time, but you know, he's great. I love his mind. It's really a beautiful, a beautiful thing to witness. And especially I was so blessed to be able to, to witness his mind, you know, at such a young age and be, be part of his world, you know. Have you seen him recently or? S I mean, no, I haven't. And I always want to reconnect with him because he's actually done little notes and things in his books about me and sending me little notes uh, in his books, not directly, that are always so kind and so uh, such good advice and such beautiful things. And, and I always want to reconnect, but I'm very bad at connecting with people. I'm, I'm like a complete mess. My life is a complete disaster because I have a child and I, I manage like directing, trying to make five films at once and you know, always like doing too many things in the same time and, and I just, um, and I have those nervous sticks because I'm so hyperactive that I actually have nervous sticks now but it's no, apparently it's completely normal. <laughs> when you drink like so much tea and you sleep two hours a night but um, I, um, yeah, I love Godard. I wish I wish I could reconnect with him, but you know, I'm very bad at that. You know. Yes. Um, since you are uh, Sam Shepard's advice notwithstanding, um, have you uh, li have little gems of insights you've gained from uh, directors, and have the French directors and or the American directors been more useful? or not in terms of it, uh, giving you ideas, and then what would the ideas you would impart as a result to the uh, next young directors that you're whipping into shape with Godard's attitude there? You know, I, I had advice from a few people. I had advice, well, indirectly Richard Linklater gave me my confidence because he didn't credit me <laughs> on the first film, but the fact that he used my writing and that it was well reviewed, specifically those scenes, etc., made me confident, so that was a big part a little more confident. I'm not saying I'm that confident. Uh, but um, then there was uh, Kieslowski was very helpful because actually at, at the time I decided, and even though I make films that are completely different from his films, but actually the advice he gave me is he, he said, make films that are true to yourself. Don't try to make, you know, a movie that's not what you are. You know, it's like, for example, I, I give an example. When you meet... Um, certain directors, um, you know, and um, uh, for example, David Lynch. You meet David Lynch. Why is David Lynch making David Lynch movie? You understand when you meet him. <laughs> no, because he's, it's true to who he is. I mean, his films are him, you know, and it's completely, you know, you meet uh, Tim Burton, you meet, you know, they're, they're, it's, for them, what they're doing, the films they're doing, is the, the makes sense. To us, it seems a bit out there and stuff, but it's actually complete logic for them. So you have to, that, I think that's a very good advice from a director to, to someone that as, aspires to become a director, is to be true to what you are, you know, whatever it is. And then, um, I'm saying that's an ideal world because you can't always be completely true because you, there's also, it's a business, etc. cetera. But, um, so he was very helpful. Also, he was very supportive of me becoming a director at the time, I was 20, a lot of people were like, ah, why would you want to be a director? Not as bad as Sam Shepard, but like saying to me, oh, come on, like directors won't dream about you anymore if you become a director. They won't fantasize about, you know, you being this empty pot that they can fill with their ideas. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Great, you know, that idea of Pygmalion, you know, really. And, uh, and I was like, so I had mostly negative and he was positive. He was like, and he actually, we talked a lot actually about screenwriting and the process and this idea of taking a seed of truth and growing a tree that's not necessarily the truth, but like the base of it is truth. You know, and, and it made me think a lot about, about things. And actually the, the next movie I want to do is actually a film that came out of, not at all inspired by, by our conversation, but based on something that we had talked about 20 years ago, and it took me 20 years to really get to it. I put the little seed of truth, and then I had to grow that 20 years, that tree since. So, but, you know, so hopefully that will be my next film. It's a drama, actually, but. 
and a bit of an homage to him in a way. Um, then there's, um, you know, friends of mine like that I've, I haven't necessarily worked with, like Babbitt Shredder, who's a friend of mine, told me, you know, things like, you know, always listen to people on set, you know, like you're not, you don't know everything. If someone has a better idea, if someone is, you know, like be open, you know, and I like that also because I think that's true. It's good to have your own ideas, but at the same time, it's not a dictatorship, a film, you know, you make a film, being a director is working with other people. That's what it is. And, you know, I think it's a good advice to be reminded, you know, it's, it's teamwork, you know, you, you don't make a film alone. That's for sure, as a director. You can write a film alone, you can't make a film alone. So, and Richard also has very much of that. Like, he really, really works with other people. I mean, other people have almost as much to say as him on set, you know? So it's, it's, it's interesting to see that way of working as well, so. Anyway, I got, throughout my life, advice from different people that way, so. And it's been helpful, you know? And the advice I would have would be the same to a young filmmaker, basically. And also maybe to never give up because it's a very long and hard road. Uh, the microphone is yeah. over there, yes. Could you please name a couple of uh, filmmaking and acting artistic influences that you've had throughout your life? Why did you cast Adam Goldberg in Two Days in Paris? You guys had terrific chemistry. and. Do you find that the overly obsessive celebrity worship of Rupert Pumpkin is still a contemporary issue? The what? what? The what? Uh, obsessive uh, celebrity worship by Rupert Pumpkin is still oh. very much a contemporary issue? Oh yeah, more than ever. Actually, it's kind of a visionary film. No, King of Comedy is one of my favorite films. First of all, because it's insane and it's about a stand-up. And I think my obsession with stand-up comedian comes from that film, you know? Um, because I'm not that I'm obsessed with stand-up comedian, but I have a fascination for them. I keep hiring them in movies. Um, I, I just love stand-up so much, and um, not that I want to do it, but it's like it fascinates me. I, I think because of that film, you know, because it kind of made me think they're all crazy, <laughs> and I want to be around them. Um, just. Um, um, the first question I forget, like what was my inspiration? There's many things that are my inspiration. Um, I've seen many, many movies as a kid. My dad would drag me see everything, you know, and probably too early, like I would see pretty dark or adult films, adult not as porno, but as, you know, as Bergman, adult. <laughs> so not, not porno, right, Bergman. Um, you know, <laughs> scenes from a marriage or uh, you know, a uh, film like that at a very, very early age. So, you know, it kind of shaped my mind a certain way. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It made me grow up pretty fast about understanding people's relationship and dynamic of adults and all that. You know, it being also Casavetes when I was like eight, nine, I would see, you know, women under the influence, the complexity of human beings, you know, when you're facing it very early on. I'm not sure it's that bad because it made me understand why people were fighting, like parents of my parents, parents of my friends, like made me understand why people are so complicated and why some people are unhappy and stuff. It's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, because films can make you understand a lot of stuff, you know, when it's good films, you know. So, um, um, what else, last thing? Adam Goldberg, Adam Goldberg. you know, I, I, first of all, I think he's a fantastic actor, and also he had been my boyfriend five years before, so it was, and he had left me. So, <laughs> listen, it, I kind of went to him, guilt tripping him that he had left me, and f by that, by making him feel bad, I got him to work in my film, basically for free. <laughs> <laughs> Now I regret I didn't have affairs with more actors because it would be much easier to cast my films now. I didn't think of it. I was like, people were flirting with me. I was not interested. I've never been too much into actors. <laughs> I never liked actors, usually. I mean, I don't like dating actors. They're too self-centered. I have enough of one self-centered person in the family. So. But like, basically, I just like, you know, I guilt trip him and he agreed to do my film. And he's great. You know, he's such a good actor. So that was fun. That was many years after we had been together, but I was, I find a way to make him feel bad and he, he agreed to do my film. 
Anything. Anything goes. Anything, you know, to make a movie, you know. There's a um, Michael oh, uh, Bear and then you. Uh, hi, Mr. Lupin. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm a huge fan of you. Uh, Today's in Paris, you. I absolutely love. I've seen the movie only how many times, and every time I see it, it's as fresh as the first time. Um, I'm a new screenplay writer. I just finished my first screenplay, and I would love to know, if you hope you could share with us, what is a bit your writing process like? And maybe, if possible, um, you, you could use Today's in Paris as, a, as some examples. And as a quick uh, side question, why was the character Jack not in Today's in New York? Thank you. Because, uh, okay, no, I don't want to. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing personal there. It's, it, don't worry, there's no like affair after the film or something. I like When it's done, it's done with me. But um, No, what the thing happened is that he, wasn't, he was not happy with the film. So he ended up, I don't know why, he, he didn't like the film. He thought I had castrated him, like that I manipulated the story into making it a film about like, like a man that was not really a man or something. It was very weird. I don't know why. I, I don't understand because I think he's fantastic in the film. And the, actually, the process and the shoot was wonderful. So, you know, I don't know. Um, the writing process, it depends, you know. On that film, originally on Two Days in Paris, I wanted to do an improvised film. What happened is that I started working with, uh, with Adam and very quickly, those financiers in France told me, uh, improvised film? They had agreed. And they're like, no, we changed our mind. We don't want, we want a full written screenplay. When I said that to Adam, he's like, uh-uh, I'm not writing a screenplay. We said it was an improvised film. So I say, okay, I've got to give something to those Germans. Uh, it was a German company financing yeah. the film. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at first they say, yes. And then they're like, no, we want a script. No, but, uh, <laughs> I love Germans. Listen, they finance all my films. <laughs> They're giving me money every film. I adore them. So um, uh, basically, I, I was like, oh shit. And I, we're not far from going into production or not going into production. So the whole film was like on a razor's edge of happening or not happening. So I wrote a screenplay in two weeks. Uh, kind of like with a gun to it. <laughs> it was like, Okay, I'm writing a screenplay. So I had no choice. I, I had to write the screenplay. So my writing process goes from, you know, it's always, uh, a, you know, it's often in a state of emergency or survive. I don't know. It's it kind of wired me to write in a way that's never, you know, it it's not a cute writing process. It's like complete. Like it's quite intense. I usually also, it's happened to me that sometimes I have a, an, an idea for 20 years and suddenly I have like Eureka, but after 20 years, you know, of thinking about it and suddenly I write everything in a week. I've written screenplays where I have a screenplay, I've been writing it for almost 20 years called Virgo Rising for Woody Allen to star in. I mean, if I don't finish it, I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen, but like, you know, I better do it soon, even though his parents died at 100. So, I might have time still, but you know, um, <laughs> but you know, like this films that I can't write, I spent 20 years on it. Lolo, it was more like a process where my favorite process of writing is this: I write, I, 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 I write a story. I think of the characters carefully. I really, really work out everything from beginning to end of the structure, the characters, every single person, every single dynamic between the characters. I write everything like with like little drawings and cards and little pins and stuff, almost like a drawing, like a giant drawing with every connection and, da -da -da and story point by point, A, B, C, D, da, da, da. And then I usually write it when I'm all done with that and I usually try to write it very quickly. Because I find that writing quickly dialogue makes it very natural. You can work forever on the structure and the characters, but I find dialogue is better when you go for it. When you don't write a scene in two weeks, you write a scene in an hour. You know, so it sounds pretty crazy, but it's actually my way of working. So that's it. The question here. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. I just have a question um, based on your experience. Which one do you think the best, directing, acting, or writing, and why? What's the best? Yeah, which one do you prefer? Oh, prefer. Um, <clears throat> you know, it has different elements that are, it's so different, the three, that I can't say I like something the best. Writing is 
probably the most complex part because you have to do the most thinking and it's often underrated compared to the amount of work, underestimated compared to actually that's where you create so much, you know, uh, of the original ideas and stuff, depending if you do adaptation, an adaptation or not. But if it's an original screenplay, that's where the mind is more at work, I think. Then I think, you know, directing is complete teamwork. You know, it's completely different than writing, I think. The opposite, it's like, it's like a party. A party with a lot of stress and a lot of decision making. <laughs> You know, it's like all those people all the time, you don't have time to think, you know, you better be really prepared because a lot of thinking is done in preparation to me, you know. Then the shoot is like, zzz, you know, it's like being electrocuted or something. <laughs> it's like so intense, but it's great and it's fun. It's like, you know. And then acting is completely something else because you're completely vulnerable, completely lost. Uh, you don't sleep anymore. You don't eat anymore or you overeat. That's my you know, you start eating too much, you know, because you're so anxious. So, you know, it's completely different. It's funny, when we were doing Before Sunset and Before uh, Midnight, <laughs> I always get confused, you know, with Ethan, when we were writing, actually writing can be quite settling because you're thinking, it's all the intellect and everything. And then Ethan and I went from writing, sleeping, eating normally, <laughs> having normal lives, sharing moments with our family, blah, blah, blah. Then you go into acting and you're like, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you have anxiety attack. I mean, acting makes you completely vulnerable. So it's a very strange step in the process. So when I do both at once, I usually go from very together to very vulnerable, very together, very vulnerable, very together, very vulnerable. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, like, like, like a little bit like crazy, a little bit crazy. Because it's completely, I think it's completely the opposite, directing and acting, weirdly enough. It's kind of a, oh, to me, a to me, to me, to me. Uh, mm. Question there? Hi. But I can't <laughs> say I prefer <laughs> something, sorry. I don't no. know actually if I even like any of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, seriously, it's kind of torture, but I'm doing it because I don't know how to do, not, not just anything else. I'm sure I could do it something else with my life, but. It's like, I can't help myself but doing it. So I do it because I can't help myself. Not sure it makes me happy at all. You know, it's really weird. I swear. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I really admire you and thank you for all your work. Thank you. Uh, I, my question has a little bit to do with the last one. Um, it seems like to you, acting, writing, and directing just go together and that's really what I want to do with my life as well. And I just wanted to know how your relationship with these three art forms kind of fl flourished and at what point you kind of um, took power that you were these three things? Um, you know, I don't know. I started writing really young, short stories, mostly sci-fi. I was a super nerd. I only read sci-fi as a kid. And so I wrote sci-fi as well. And so, um, I had a club called the Yoda Club. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to move objects, and we were like two people. <laughs> <laughs> Me and a girlfriend of mine, uh, with short hair, wearing corduroys, and trying to move objects, but um, with our power, with our mind, not with our fingers, with our mind. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, I don't know, but I just, I just, I just did it for two days in Paris. Actually, I did it before. I did a film called Looking for Jimmy in 97 that was a completely improvised movie where, I, again, I had no choice. It was shot for 5,000 bucks. I had no choice but put myself in it because obviously no one else wanted to be in it. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and I, I realized there's something about being in my film sometimes, but I'm not gonna do it always because I have a few projects where I'm not in it and I'm happy about that. Um, I, I noticed that you kind of give the tone as well of the film. Like it, it kind of gives a certain tone, like it becomes really your kind of film, you know? You're in it, you wrote it, you direct it. It's become this kind of object that you created, you know? It's, it's an interesting process. I mean, I don't know why I'm doing it because as I said, I'm not sure it's making me happy, you know? <laughs> but I, I don't know how to do, it, uh, not, I, I, how to not do it, you know? But I love when I'm, I, I've been making films like The Sky Lab is a film no one saw because it was not bought here. And it's, it's actually a sweet movie, but you know, it's very French and I don't know, people didn't, I think, uh, yeah, I had a problem with some women at a festival that didn't want it. 
because she thought it was, uh, I don't know, she's crazy anyway, I think. <laughs> But anyway, she's a bitch. I'll, I'll get back to her. I'll, I'll, I'll get to her one day. She only has power because she's married to a powerful man. But anyway, uh, one of those. Is she German? <laughs> no, she's not German. L listen, I love Germans. <laughs> no, hey, they give me money for all my films. And on top of it, they're very nice to me in Germany. It's really we weird. But they love me. Um, it's called... <laughs> listen, my son is half German. Let's not talk about it. Um, so, no, I, I forgot, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> anyway, the Skylab, I got to direct a lot of scenes where I was not in because I had a small part in it, and it was a wonderful experience. Especially I got to direct kids, I enjoy directing kids, I, I enjoy directing actors when I'm not in it. You know, it's really, it's really wonderful, so I hope I'll be able to do that as well. Even though my next film, I'm probably going to be in it. It's, the, it's kind of the last of a series of film, because after that, I don't think I want to be in anything for a little bit. I, I, um, I want to relax a little bit. So we have time for two more questions. Uh, there's a microphone here. Hi, yes. um, this is a very nerve-wracking question to ask, but um, I did survive working in a show for Sam, so I'm <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, do you, there are you know, a handful of, of French actors who are so accepted and loved in, in America, and I just wondered if you thought that there would ever be a possibility of an American actor um, working in France in French in, the th in, the, you know, in a film. Yeah, I think you know, French are very, if you decide to have a career in France and move to France as an American, I think you will have lots of parts. Uh, I think as an American actor, there is a possibility or actress, you know, um, you know, you have in France a few actors from other countries that have become successful and they have accents, but no one really cares after a while. Uh, no, we have like a bunch of actors like Sergi Lopez, who's Spanish. We have like, you know, when people decide to have a career in France, if they're good actors, obviously, otherwise, you know, you know there, there's a possibility uh, to, to do that. Yeah. I don't think France is close to only French, French uh, people, you know. There's this actress also, uh, she's in uh, the, the film uh, two, two Friends, Deux Amis. Uh, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's w really wonderful and she, she's, uh, you know, acting in French. She learned French and she's making movies in French. So I think, peop you know, you just need to speak French. That's the thing. <laughs> Well, you need to be fluent in French, just like for French actors when they come here. Even when they're very successful French actor, if they don't speak English, I mean, we know the, an example, but like, they don't work. <laughs> they don't work here, no matter how successful they are, you know? It sucks, you know, but they have to learn French, uh, English, or French if they want to, Americans working in France have to learn, you know, the language is important. You can't not, not speak the language, obviously, you know? And there's a last question. There was a microphone. Where is, where is it? Oh, there. Sorry. Hi. If you could adapt any book into a film, which would it be and why? You know, it's a book. It's called The Demon by Hubert Selby Jr. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great book. It's, uh, it's very dark. And um, someone has the rights, I think, for life, and no one will never be able to adapt it unless... And I think it would be great if they gave the rights to a woman, actually. Um, to me, in particular. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> But um, I think Jean-Jacques Benex has the rights of many of his books for life, and I don't think you'll ever... No one will never be able to get He them. He has right for that film? For the demon, yeah, I think so. For, I mean, for the story. Yeah, yeah for li I think lifetime rights. Yeah, I th that's what I had heard last time. But maybe it has changed since. Maybe someone bought it from him. But I'd I'd love to adapt that book because I think I really understand the character. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Would you make it here or in France? I mean, it, here. Yeah. Here. Okay. Would you cast American actors? <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, it's a bit, it's, it's, like an, it's like American Psycho, but much more, prof like much deeper than American Psycho, but much more like complex, much, much more complex. Not that I don't like American Psycho, it's a great film, a great book, but this is very, very complex version of it, very complex about human nature and 
It's a great book. I think we should start a campaign for you to get the right, because it would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone will do a hashtag, something. Will, yeah. <laughs> There's also another book I'd love to adapt, Truisme. It's a French book that I love. It's, very, it's a long time ago, but it's about a woman becoming a pig. <laughs> it's not that old. I mean, it's like... No, no, it's, no, no. There's also it like she falls yeah. in love with a wolf. It's yeah. like very complex. It's a, it's a Marie uh, Dariusek. Huh? The, the French book. Oui, oui, yeah. the French book. I don't know book. if yeah, it yeah. was translated here. So. Actually, actually, I think Godard has the rights <laughs> for a long time. Jean-Luc Godard, believe it or not. It's a really great book. Because it's about, it's, it's not just about a woman becoming a pig, it's kind of like the metamorphosis, it's about something else, you know. Anyway, it's a great book, but that's it. Okay. Well, we, we're going to work on these directors, Thank make you. sure that they give you the rights. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank we're you. Gonna, uh,